I'm going to share with you eight After Effects techniques to help you improve the look or the workflow of your projects. So let's get to it. Starting off with one of the most popular techniques right now is gradients. To add gradients with layer styles, you just need to right click your layer, go to layer styles and then gradient overlay. You can change the colors to anything you like and play around with the angle and gradient style too for some different looks. However, we can make these even better than a standard two color gradient and we can even have them animated as well. If we create some pre-comps of shapes that have some simple animations in, for example, I've just created a bunch of different size rectangles in a large composition here and move the position across from left to right. And in this one, I've created a group of circles and I've just alt clicked the stopwatch on the position parameter and applied a simple wiggle expression. We can then use these pre-comps and alpha map them to any object we want. So I have a ball layer in this composition here and I'm just going to drag this pick whip under track map to our ball layer. Now, if you don't see the track back options, you can hit F4 on your keyboard to toggle between these switches. I then want to apply a really strong Gaussian blur to both of these pre-comps just to soften our shape layers out. And then we can play around with the blending modes too. This gives us a really cool looking layered gradient. And of course, this doesn't need to be animated either. You could layer a bunch of different shapes up to create the look of lighting. It really is just personal choice. If you want to make certain things and gradients in particular look even better, we need to talk about glows. Just look at the difference between these two. And the only change was adding glows. While we can add glows through layer styles and also the standard After Effects glow, it does leave a lot to be desired. That's where Super Glow by Motion Array can come in super handy. As you can see, Superglow is an extremely powerful glow effect that gives us a way better effect while offering us much more control. It has built-in presets for us to choose from, or we can of course tweak these settings and make our own. For example, I'm definitely going to want to drop the radius and power of this one, and maybe adjust the threshold as well. Now I can of course tint this to a colour that's better suited to my gradient, but what I love is being able to add grain and chromatic aberration directly in this one effect too, which if you know me, I always add to the majority of my projects as a final touch. Superglow is one of many new plugins from Motion Array. They integrate directly as new effects into After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro 2. So if you're mid-edit and you don't want to hop into After Effects, you can apply your effects in there instead. Of course, however, you're not just limited to glows. There's 50 plugins to choose from in this library. Motion Array also gives you access to over 10,000 unlimited downloads from graphics and illustrations, stock footage, templates, and textures. What's great is you can try it for free with hundreds of assets to play around with. So if you're looking for thousands of project assets, and some new plugins to play with, you can check out Motion Array using the link in the description below. And a massive thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Now I have no idea what to call this one, but again, it's another favorite and popular technique. Now I have the same ball and gradients from earlier, just animating across its X position, which looks really boring. I'm just going to come up to my pen tool here and draw a triangle shape on the edge of my ball and just add a simple fill. And then we're going to add an effect called Wave Warp. I'm then going to change the height to 20 and the wave width to around 140 and I'll change the direction to minus 90 so it moves in the opposite direction to our ball. Now while we have a nice wave it's not very symmetrical so I'll add a mirror effect to this too and then all I need to do is change the angle to plus 90. Now we have a much more symmetrical awesome looking wave ball. We can then dupe this up with control or command and D and change our original shape ever so slightly and then we can just slightly adjust our wave warp settings for a few more easy variants. Adding an extra keyframe is a little hack I like to use to keep a bit of extra movement going, but also add more control to my easing. Just take a look at the difference between these two on screen. The one on the left has a simple ease in and out, and the one on the right has an extra keyframe in the middle. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this simple text slide here and I come back a few frames from my end keyframe just by holding control and pressing my left arrow key a couple of times, that'll move us back one frame each time. I'm then going to add a new keyframe by clicking the diamond on the left here. Then I'll move this new keyframe back some more and maybe our final keyframe can be moved forward a little more. 
By doing this, it gives us a much softer ease to the end position, but also keeps some subtle visual interest on screen over a longer period of time. Now for this one, I'll be taking you back to math class, which you either loved or you hated. And I'll be honest, I wasn't a lover. But the sine wave expression is a super easy way to add repeating motion to any scene. So I have a ball parented to this rectangle here, and rather than animating this seesaw by hand with rotation parameters and keyframing everything, I can use a sine wave expression instead. This keeps it a bit more procedural and makes things easier to change down the line should I ever need to. So I'm going to select my seesaw layer, and I'm going to press R on my keyboard to bring up my rotation property and I'm going to Alt and click the stopwatch here. In the expression window, I'm going to type math with a capital M, dot sign, then open parentheses, and After Effects will automatically close them for us as well. And in here, I'm just going to type time times five. And then after the parentheses, I'm gonna do times 10. Just so you know, the time in here returns the current time in seconds, and then the multiplier by five is just speeding this time up. The value on the outside, which is our times 10 multiplier here, is affecting the amplitude of the wave. And if I press play, it doesn't really move correctly. So I'll go to my ball layer and press P to bring up my position. I'm going to right click this and hit separate dimensions. I'm going to alt click the stopwatch on just the X position and copy the expression from the seesaw and paste it in. Now it's not moving as far as I would like, so I'm going to change the end multiplier to 150, as again, this is our amplitude of the wave. Now if I hit play, we have a cool repeating seesaw animation, and of course, if we adjust that 150 multiplier, we can affect how much the ball is moving across the seesaw. Time remapping is a really easy way to add some easing to something that you might have created which is a little more complex. I know that might sound like a mouthful, but let me explain. So I have this hand animated ball here, but it's quite slow and it all works on linear keyframes, so it looks a little boring too. To fix this, I can pre-comp all of these layers by selecting them all and pressing Ctrl, Shift and C. And then I'm going to select this layer and press Ctrl, Alt and T to bring up my time remap property. I'm just going to drag this end keyframe back to two seconds. So now we're working at double speed. And then I'm going to select both my keyframes and I want to ease ease them by pressing F9 on my keyboard. And of course, I can just quickly go into my graph editor here and I'll just adjust the easing values on both sides. Now if I hit play, we have a much nicer eased animation just from editing two simple keyframes. Offsetting your layers is a really easy way to level up your projects and make them look that bit more professional. So I have this really simple animation here where I've just animated this kind of email icon and we have a few lines and a box popping up as well. While it looks okay, it definitely overlaps in time and we can make this look much better just by delaying our layers. So I'm just going to select my top four layers here and hold down Alt and then press page down a couple of times, which is going to move my layer one keyframe at a time. I'm then going to deselect the bottom layer and move these three over another two keyframes. And then I'll deselect the next layer up and I'll move these over two keyframes again. And then finally, just the top layer and I move that over two keyframes again. And now if we hit play, we have a much more interesting and dynamic looking animation, all from just making a couple of timing tweaks. Now nulls are a great way to add some extra animation to your scene or easily move objects around that are already animated. So if I have all of these objects animated in my scene and we'll pretend there's actually a bit more going on here than this simple text animation, but then the client comes to me and wants to change the position of them, I don't want to have to reanimate and reposition all of them manually and moving them will mess up my keyframes. Instead, I can create a null object by going to layer, new, null object. And I'll parent my layers to the null object by selecting them all and dragging the pick whip to the null layer. And I'll just rename the null layer to pause control. Now I can freely move around the null position to get the original layers where I need them without affecting any of the keyframes. This is incredibly useful. Now the fun doesn't have to stop there. And if you want to go ahead and learn some more After Effects, you can watch this video next.